Welcome to Sunday Morning Worship at Our Saviors Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Our Saviors is a congregation of people forgiven in Christ whose mission is to proclaim the good news and connect faith to everyday life. We are glad you have chosen to worship with us. Our traditional worship will begin in a few moments. Good morning and welcome to worship. Whoop. Good morning. There it is. Oh, I had a pause. Good morning and welcome to worship on this Reformation Sunday. It is so good to see all of you today as we give thanks for our Lutheran heritage this morning. I see some of you are wearing red in honor of Reformation Sunday. That's great. I, I can't tell if you are at home, but I know some of you probably are. It is good to be together here in worship as we celebrate this day. Give thanks for the blessings that God showers down upon all of us. We are the church together, called to proclaim Christ and nurture faith that connects to everyday life, even during this crazy time that we are experiencing now. So with that in mind, I just want to take a few moments before we begin our worship service this morning to speak with you candidly. As you probably know, the COVID-19 infection rate continues to rise in our state, and with it, the rate at which people are being hospitalized and some even dying. So as people of faith, it is absolutely critical. Indeed, it is our calling to do all that we can to care for our neighbors. And this is what God wants us to do always, but especially during this time. So to that end, remember four basic things that you can do to take care of your neighbors these days. Stay home when you don't feel well, or if you have been exposed to someone who has tested positive for COVID-19. Wear a mask over your mouth and nose whenever you are around others. And our pastors, we do that too when we're not speaking our parts. We wear our mask here as well. Um, uh, maintain at least six feet between yourselves and others. And wash your hands regularly and use hand sanitizer. Do these things not only when you're here at church, but wherever you are in the community as a way of living out our great commitment to love our neighbor as ourselves. Now, also, if you are, uh, haven't already, please let our communion team uh, members know by raising your hands if you need gluten-free bread or grape juice. Go ahead and raise your hands if you need that brought to you now. Looks like we're doing pretty good, I guess. So if you need that, uh, just let us know at any time. We want to make sure that everyone here feels Christ welcome at the table. And now as we begin our time in worship, I invite you to stand. And Pastor Justin, would you please lead us in our confession and forgiveness? I would be honored, Pastor Tim. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God the one who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let's confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Please pray with me silently as I pray aloud. 
faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace to go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep the gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble. Cast away our transgressions. Turn us again to life in you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Friends, God hears the cries of everyone who calls out in need. And through his death and resurrection, Jesus Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen.
We gather in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. join me in prayer. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel and bestow on the church your saving peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Thanks for praying for us, Pastor Tim. Well, kids, it's time for Kid Talk. And if you're here in this room, you can just stay right where you're at. If you're at home, hello. I know you're there. You know, we sure do miss being able to do everything we normally would with you kids here at church. We miss seeing all of you here together for Sunday school or Wednesday school. We miss having all of this fun together and all of the learning and singing and seeing it together for ourselves. We know, though, you're still doing a lot of these excellent things at home with your families and with the wonderful resources that Ms. Melissa has provided for all of you. But I want to name that doing church at home can be kind of tricky sometimes. Because you kids always seem to ask a question that adults don't seem ready to answer. Your questions about God are so big. They are very, very big questions about God. And sometimes adults just don't know what to say about all that. Well, Pastor Tim told us this morning that this is Reformation Sunday, the day we Lutherans remember the birthday of our church. The Lutheran church had its start 500 years ago with a pastor and professor named Martin Luther. 
I don't need to tell you everything he did, but our, our denomination's name, our church's name, Lutheran, comes from his name, Luther. And let me tell you, every time you kids ask a question about God, you're doing something that Pastor Luther would have been pretty proud of. Because he really wanted people to learn about God at home. He wanted families to talk about God and to read the Bible together. One of the most important books he wrote was called The Small Catechism. And the whole idea of this book was to teach God uh, to families so that families could learn together at home. It was like the first Lutheran takeout church. And everywhere inside this little book, Pastor Luther asks, what does this mean? What does this mean? What does this mean? Luther understood that everyone had questions about God. Everyone. So the whole book talks about some of our biggest questions about God and the Bible. And Luther also knew that parents didn't have all the answers. Pastor Luther knew that he would write this book so that families could use it at home because parents and Pastor Luther, none of us actually know everything about God. And we believe the church should help each one of your families learn and discuss about God together. So that's what we do. Anytime we send stuff home with you kids to talk about God together, anytime you talk about God at home, anytime we share this conversation about God, we discover that all of the right answers about God are just not nearly as important as one good question. What does this mean? What does this mean? When you ask that question over and over again, when that becomes the foundation of your faith, when that becomes the way you believe, you discover that that's the joy of church. Asking these questions over and over again so that together we can talk about what God is doing in our lives. What does this mean? Keep asking because that's what helps us understand and reform the church every day. God speaks to us in scripture, preaching, song, and prayer. A reading from Romans. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be accountable to God. For no human being will be justified in his sight by deeds prescribed by law. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But now, irrespective of law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by the grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a sacrifice atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he has passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at the present time that he himself is righteous and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus then what becomes of boasting? It is excluded. By what law? By that of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we, we, we behold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
following the reading of the gospel this morning, I invite you to respond with applause. It's a nonverbal way of exclaiming, thanks be to God for this word. Hear now a reading from John chapter 8. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. This is the word of God. This is the word of life. You may be seated. Dear friends gathered here in this room and from afar, grace to you and peace from God Almighty and from Jesus the Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. You heard me read it, but I'll say it again. It was Jesus who said, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. On the surface, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> but it doesn't take long before we realize we are so like the Jews to whom Jesus was talking that day, especially those of us who live in this country enjoying, as we do, a degree of privilege, we revel in the freedoms we have, and, truth be told, we are clueless about the truth about which Jesus is speaking, the truth about freedom. A couple of weeks ago, as I was channel surfing at home, I came across one of my favorite movies, A Few Good Men. Anyone familiar with that movie? Yeah, Jack Nicholson plays the quintessential seasoned Marine. And in the movie, he's on trial for allegedly ordering an operation that resulted in the death of another Marine. Tom Cruise, who plays opposite Nicholson, is a young military lawyer in the movie who happens to be the prosecutor in this trial. And at the moment in that trial, when the lawyer thinks he's got the Marine right where he wants him, he demands, I want the truth. Do you remember what Nicholson responded with? <laughs> you can't handle the truth. Well, today Jesus gives us the straight-up truth without our asking for it. And in fact, it is a truth we cannot handle because it's this. We are not free. And not only do we not know that we are captive, but we also misunderstand what freedom is all about. We live at a time when freedom is lifted up as a flag for many causes. In this time of pandemic, freedom has been embraced by those resisting local government's restrictions on public gatherings and free movement. Many seem to view freedom as the ability to do whatever they want without any restrictions or accountability. But this tragic misunderstanding only leads to deeper captivity for us as individuals, for us as a society, even for creation. As Christians, we describe this captivity as a result of sin's stranglehold on us. 
and on the world God made. It's a bondage that none of us escapes. Doctor, the Reverend Dr. Carmelo Santos identifies five specific ways we experience the chains of sin. The first is perhaps the most common, shame. Shame is that suffocating feeling we have in the wake of immoral cravings. And the tragic thing about shame is that it makes us forget how precious we are to God and to those who love us. The second is maybe just as common. It is guilt, that crushing weight that we bear over bad decisions and reprehensible behaviors. But there is another form of guilt, the guilt of privilege. When we begin to recognize and accept the ways that we benefit from the misery and exploitation of others. Which brings us to the third bondage of sin that Santos identifies, that is oppression. Tragically, the innocent often bear the consequences of our sin in this world. I mean, just think here about slavery, for instance, or lynching, or Jim Crow laws, both past and present, the mass incarceration of black and brown people, the forced removal of indigenous people from their native lands, massacres, genocides, gender-based violence, abuse and discrimination against women and girls and sexual minorities, and even the pollution of the environment that's resulted in the extinction of entire species and ecosystems. The fourth bondage of sin is linked to our human fragility. We are by nature finite. We are mortal, susceptible to disease and injury and even death. But sin creeps in here and holds us captive when it leads us to expect that God should prevent these things and protect us from harm. It all but clouds the eyes of faith, making us blind to God's promise to redeem this life of suffering through resurrection and eternal life. It robs us of the courage we need to live this fragile life fully as God intends. And finally, Santos names self-deprecating feelings and thoughts and says simply, we sin when we fail to value ourselves as God values us. The sin that enslaves us is inextric inextricably woven into our existence. The Apostle Paul said it himself, all have sinned, all have sinned and fallen short. None of us is living up to the vision God has for us. And deep down, way past the part that tries to deny that, we know it's true. And that's the truth we can't handle. Everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. Yes, we might be able to grow and improve as human beings, but we will never grow out of sin. Sure, we might be able to help our world become a better place, but we will never save it. We are ultimately insufficient for our own salvation, let alone that of anyone else. And that's the truth. But it's not the only truth. The second truth is our saving grace. Jesus said it, so if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. 
Bishop Layla Ortiz of the Metro DC Synod in our ELCA recently shared her experience of this life-altering, indeed life-saving freedom. It was in the spring of 2005, she says. I was in my second semester of seminary in Philadelphia. I was raised in the Pentecostal church. I was confident in my theology, and I was stubborn enough not to let myself be affected by Lutheran teaching in that setting. But then God happened in a way that I could not deny. I was sitting in Lutheran confessions class. After three weeks of turning in reflection papers that each came back with red marks and sad faces next to every single paragraph wherever I was the actor behind my own salvation. I was deeply offended and frustrated. I questioned why I was there and if I should stay. I was convinced that I knew Jesus, I knew the Bible and solid theology, and I was also convinced the professor knew nothing about true relationship with Christ. I was poorly mistaken on all accounts. On this particular day, the professor was talking about justification by faith through grace. And as he spoke, I listened, I took notes. But then he walked away from his manuscript and gestured in my direction. And he said, when you understand that God chose for you to be saved and that you did not choose your own salvation, then you'll understand God's amazing grace. These words pierced my heart like a sword. I had never heard such a thing, and yet I remember thinking in that moment, what he just said is true. My spirit knew it without a doubt. She writes. My friends, this is what God's word does. It's why Jesus said, if you remain, if you continue, if you immerse yourself in my word, you will know the truth because you will come to know me. And the truth will make you free. Jesus is speaking directly to you today. And this is what he's saying. I will not condemn my children. I love you. I forgive you. And I will remember your sin no more. You are free. And if Jesus makes you free, you are free indeed, free to love and serve your neighbor, free to share this life-altering, life-saving word with a world that is bound by sin, free to care for the poor when the world says, keep it for yourself, free to stand with those out on the margins of society when the world would just rather pass them by. This is the truth for you today. Hear it, receive it, and be free. Amen.
Thank you. As people who have been justified by faith, we use the freedom Christ gives us to declare what we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Please participate silently as I proclaim these ancient words. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Church, given to us by the Holy Spirit, the one who lives through the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, now let us pray for the church and the world and for all those who are in need. Let us pray. Gracious and healing God, renew and inspire the church in the freedom of the gospel. Where the church is in error, reform it. Where the church speaks your truth, strengthen it. Where the church is divided, unify it. Fill us with the passion and power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Creating God as the earth changes, as mountains shake and waters roar, may we care for this planet and for all living things. Sustain all peoples and lands recovering from wildfires, hurricanes, and drought. Where greed and ignorance has destroyed your good creation, let us all work together to bring healing and restoration. Lord, hear our prayer. God of reconciliation, heal the divides in our nation and world. Inspire leaders to work at bringing people together during this time of political unrest, racial tensions, and pandemic fatigue. We pray for Mayor Paul Tenhaken and our community leaders as they work tirelessly for our city and region during this difficult time. We pray for our health care workers and first responders as they serve and protect. We pray for all those on the front lines who need your strength and your wisdom and your peace. Lord, hear our prayer. God of healing, we pray for those living in bondage to debts, chronic pain, or addiction. We also pray for everyone who's feeling worn out from the pandemic and all these challenges that face our world these days. Pray especially for those who have the added stress of illness and loss. Be with the sick and the hospitalized. Mark Betterton, Joyce Olson, Sharon Schultz, Jack Dibbig, Dee Segrist, Gerald Beninga, and for those we name in our own hearts. Be with those who are grieving including David, Tiffany, and Jake Jensen, and Judy and Bob Hargens, and with Donna Wilson and family as they mourn the death of her husband, Dick. Lord, hear our prayer. God of life, we give you thanks for the promise of new life through the waters of baptism given to Finley, Griffin, and Samuel Howard this weekend. May they continue to grow in their understanding of your love for them through the years. Lord, hear our prayer. God of grace, through death and resurrection of your Son, you have freed us from sin and death, and you've given us a place in your eternal home. We give thanks for our ancestors who have shown us truth and freedom, especially Martin Luther and the other saints who work for the renewal of the church. Help us continue to boldly pro proclaim the gospel of Christ, that all may live in the freedom of your love. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, enfold us and all for whom we pray in your loving arms. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Jesus said the truth will make us free, free from sin and from everything else that keeps us separated from God and from each other. What we do with that freedom becomes our offering. It's our offering to God and to the world. When we are captured by God's grace, 
we are free to love our neighbors as God has loved us. And, and friends, this is freedom like none other. This is the freedom that changes the world. Today, in the music and gifts we share, we pray that God will bless our offerings of all shapes and sizes so that the world may know the freedom we find in God's love. If you brought an offering with you today, you can drop it in the back now or on your way out of the the worship space today. If you prefer to give electronically, you can simply text the word SHARING to 73256. One word, SHARING to five numbers, 73256. It's actually that easy to escape from what binds you and to take hold of God's freedom. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ.
who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. I invite you now at this time to take the gifts that have been prepared for you and placed at the end of your pews and hold them as we pray. Do not eat them now, but pick up those communion elements. And we remember that it was on the night in which he was betrayed that our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. As we prepare now to receive this sacrament of God's grace, we are reminded that you have come to this banquet table where Christ gives himself as food and drink. I invite you now to eat.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Well, again, thank you so much for being here today as we gather together in worship. And now as we come to our end of our time together, just a few announcements I'd like to share with you before we send you on your way. With the election times almost here, uh, I feel like praying, don't you? I think that's a wonderful thing that we need to do. And uh, if you're in luck, if you'd like to do some of that, because that's just what we intend to do here at Our Saviors. During the week prior to the election, we will be holding a prayer vigil right here at church 
so that we can pray for our country, its leaders, and everyone involved in this important process. More information on our prayer vigil will, will be uh, made available next week on our website and at the uh, coming up at OSL uh, email that we all get, so please watch for this. Also, please be aware that the OSL library will be closed on Election Day, November 3rd, and it will resorm, uh, resume normal hours on Wednesday, November 4th. As we have been highlighting each week during this month, our spiritual care ministry team is focusing on an issue facing many of us these days, pandemic fatigue. Maybe you've been feeling overwhelmed by all the disruptions and uncertainties brought on by the pandemic and are feeling in need of a little extra support. If you are in our building today, make sure you stop by in the gathering place out there on your way out and check out our COVID-19 awareness display which offers suggestions on resources to help you or someone you love through this difficult time. And if you're watching from home, go to our website and you'll find some of these resources listed there. Or perhaps you would like to have the support of someone who will listen to you and pray with you. If so, perhaps you would benefit from support from a Stephen minister. Our Stephen ministry program here at Our Saviors is a wonderful gift indeed. And remember that you don't have to go through a difficult time alone. If you'd like to know more about this, give me a call here at church or one of our other pastors, and uh, we'd be happy to give you a little more information on that. And as worship now comes to an end, please remember to remain seated until an usher dismisses you from the back. Pastor Justin? Well, from this font, where so many of us are washed as babies receive this blessing, Mothering God, Creator, Savior, and Comforter, bless you and lead you into the way of truth and life. Amen. Go in peace because Jesus has made you free. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us in worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. For more information about Our Saviors, please visit our website at oslchurch.com and like us on Facebook. We invite you to join us again next Sunday morning. Until next time, may God's abundant love and blessings empower you to share the good news of Jesus Christ.